what we're here to do today is to pour libation for a very strong brother. Uh, first name was Mar Malcolm X. Later changed his name to, and I get this wrong sometimes, but say it for me. Exactly. Great man. He brought us to recognize ourselves at a time when we didn't know ourselves. And he fits into a time of history that takes us off the shores of America before there was an America. He takes us to the many countries that was on a land called Akabulan, before it was called Africa. Af Akabulan was made up of many nations, and those nations had traditions that was pretty universal. One of those traditions was to make sure that we recognize those whose shoulders we stand on. With that said, <coughs> it also recognized a structure of living, of life, of what we carry forward with our spirit. Our spirit that we call in Saka Sunsum. And it is that spirit that we continuously recognize as we begin each program. Now, the cycle of life is based on the pouring of libations. I did hand out a sheet that gives you a little knowledge about libations and the pouring of it. And to whom? I do a little abbreviation of it to fit our times now. The libation is you have the cup of life that is called Kinkabe Cha Umoja, and it contains water. With the cycle of life, the water poured to the earth brings forth life. That is the cycle that has continued since the beginning of man. So as we pour libation, we acknowledge those who come before us. And if you're in agreement, then you, the audience, says, Ashe. Now, Ashe is not a religious term. Some of us today have been bred into thinking that anything having to do with spirituality of recognizing ourselves is against the religious teaching of Christianity and other religions we follow. Well, I pour libations in recognition of three African symbols that we all should be aware of because it takes us back to the beginning when we had order, we gave order to the world. It's called Ma'at, M-A-A-T, for those who want to research it. Ma'at represents the universal, which means the order of the universe. And it has 10 cardinal virtues which it follows. I also pour the rec uh, libation and recognition to a symbol called Sankofa. S-A-N-K-O-F-A. That simply means to have the wisdom 
to go back to your past as you build your future. Very critical for us right now that we know the wisdom of our past goes off the shores of America. The final libation that I pour is called my Alpha. M A A F A. My Alpha is the great disaster of the African people because of white supremacy. That means it's global. Like the Jewish people have their Holocaust, so have the African people globally been under the ma'afa of white supremacy dating back to the start of the transatlantic slave trade. Now with those three symbols in mind, I will place Brother Al, Malcolm's name, what's his name, crowd? Al. Say it like you mean it. We're celebrating him today on February the 21st, 2022, which marks the 57th anniversary of his assassination in the Audubon Ballroom in New York City. We pay homage to him because we know that who he descends from off the shores of America, he represented their greatness in this land. So I'll begin my starting back with Akabulin, our people. And as I pour libation, and if you're in agreement, then you were signified by saying Ashe. So this first libation, in honor of our great Al also known as Malcolm X, I pour this libation in honor of his thoughts from whom he descend from. If you're in agreement of his greatness and the people he descend from in Mayat, say Ashe with me. Ashe. Ashe. I'm for this next libation to my Alpha, the great Holocaust, the African diaspora damage that was done by the transatlantic slave trade. All the 300 years, three centuries of us being carried off the motherland, <coughs> brought to a new land in chain. Those who survived that Holocaust so that we might be here today, I pour this libation in their name. If you agree, Ashe. Ashe. So, we're talking about Sankofa now. All right. And in Sankofa, as you recall, that's when we take time to go back and use our wisdom to learn from our past as we build our future. And in building our future, that means that we understand what had happened to us. As we learn our knowledge 
from our past and we build our future using Sankofa, we make sure that we understand and remember the lessons that Malcolm X taught us. He taught us that we are human beings. He taught us that we are great. He taught us that we descended from the first man. He taught us that whatever we will to do, we can accomplish because that is our greatness. We have to remember that. We have to use that as we build our future. So I pour this libation in honor of Malcolm X as we use our Sankofa to build our future. And if you agree, Ashe. Ashe. Now I pour this last libation to our future as we recognize it and as we understand that we don't stand here in a vacuum, that our personal, our personal people from whom we descend, our mothers, our fathers, our aunts, our uncles, Lord knows we can't move on without recognizing them. So I'm going to pour this final libation in their name and their honor, and we will call out their names at this time. So I'll begin, and you can join in with me, recognizing my father, Reverend W.D. Williams. Call out the names of your ancestors as well at this time. Sister Ruth. This time, Dorothy Ann Williams. Say it loud. Call Edward Nelson. Hattie Nelson. Luther Williams. Luther Mitchell. Kathleen Martin. In their names, I pour this final libation. And if you agree with me, I say. I say. At the same time, I pour this final libation to those yet unborn, the future to whom we do what we do today in recognizing that we want to leave them a world better than what we found it. If you agree, I say. I say. I say. I say. I say. I say. Hotel. Hotel. In the name of. God most gracious and most merciful. I'd like to thank everyone who attended today and our contribution and looking at a moment. 57 years ago, Malcolm, our black shining prince, was murdered. We might have 70% of what happened, but we still know, know everything. 30 years I've been doing something on his assassination date and his birth date. I did it at UMKC, at the Freedom Fountain, all over town. But now I'm old. <laughs> I could just about get people in my own house, a senior citizen building, to come down and honor Malcolm as time moves on. So I'm thankful for people's participation to help me keep doing it. I don't know if I'll be able to do it anymore. But praise be to God Almighty that we're at a point when truth is coming about and we should be able to, as family, our young babies need to know the truth. The truth is what we must protect. We ain't get beat up and enslaved and robbed and raped for nothing. We have a mission that Almighty God put us on. The big lie has to die from the truth. And what we have, when we take an authentic leader like El Haz, Malisha Baz, Malcolm X. There you go. And Malcolm ain't dead to me. 
Malcolm is more alive today. So he ain't talking about me or you no more. But every time you look up, you see something about Malcolm, a message from Malcolm. And Malcolm is alive as far as I'm concerned because his words is wisdom. And we still got to break down the ballot or the bullet. Woo! Ballot or the bullet. So I'm thankful there's 126 units in this building and black lives don't matter here. And a black man built it. So that would be my next project, Alex Harris project. To take their name away, take their contract away. And Charles Hadley built it duplexes across the street, first black councilman in Kansas City. So we have, before we die, work to do. And this time, as long as I'm alive, I want to stand for us knowing the truth and protecting it and being able to honor our brothers and sisters. Oh, Ida B. Well, we got some people that are so incredible. You could tell me more about Minnie the Stallion or Cardi B than you can tell me about Ida B. Wells. That hurts me when I talk to our young people. But these were some incredible people. We are black history. This is black, this is true black history right here. And we're making it in a building built by a black man named Alex Harris. Praise be to Allah. Thank you for this time. Ashe and Hotep. And I'm ever so grateful to continue to be a part of what Ron McMillan from New York to Kansas City has started and continued to do the last 30 years. I will always be a part of someone's life or mission when they're telling the truth and making sure that people of color and not black, but Africans as we are, I will be ever so happy when our people stop calling themselves of color. I believe as I continue to do my research that in the late 60s, our people began calling ourselves black as our founding people of the Black Panther Party, because if we go back to the 60s, we were still being called Negroes and colored. So people, if you're not really going to be actively being or dealing with the 16-point platform of the Black Panther Party, stop calling yourselves a color. Wake up. Our ancestors are from Africa. And if you ever listen to Malcolm, Marcus Garvey, and true people who came about wanting to tell the truth, Africans we are. So please start dealing with your culture or you're gonna to fall to the wayside as they continue to disintegrate and try to erase our history. Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, I wanna thank Brother Ron for this day, for acknowledging Brother Malcolm and his life, his legacy, his message that still is a message that we need to cling to today. When he said that we've been bamboozled, we still bamboozled. We haven't stopped being bamboozled. And the reason being is we bamboozling ourselves. We bamboozling our kids our kids' kids. We have to take this day and transcend a new message to our community, to our people. That message has to be one of the greatness that Malcolm spoke of. As Ron said, all of the messages that he was trying to implement in our community still relevant today. So as I stand here in front of you, I urge you out there to start enlightening yours as to the realities that we face, the information they need. I said just this morning that we have to take, as Brother Archie talked about Sankofa, we have to take it back to the days of morality, spirituality, and conscious thinking. Okay, here's what I got to say about this community. We all need to come together with heart 
and solve, and we can solve this problem. It's just, it ain't gonna take one man, it's gonna take a lot of men. And we gotta be stronger about it. We gotta go knock on everybody's door and everybody world. Just we gotta come together as one. That's the only way we're gonna solve this problem. Forget what people say about you. Forget all that. You just come together in your heart, know and know all that stuff. But you know we all is in the community and we should stick together. You know, I've been here and you know what, I I, I don't belong here. I do belong here. God put me here. You know what I'm saying? In this building. And you know what I'm saying? For years I've got along with mostly bad people. I don't care what kind of walk, walk of life you come from. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wasn't raised, you know, the way you was raised or this way. But like you just got through saying, it's about coming together. And, and I mean, it's not that I'm better than you or I'm trying to be better than you. It's about trying to have respect toward each other, toward the women. You know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff I've seen here, I mean, Really, I mean, it, it just turns me around. You know what I'm saying? No respect toward women at all. I said, I'm, I'm basically from out south, but uh, it's, it's, it's everywhere. You know, you turn the news on this morning, it's killing you. I mean, it, it scares you because you got kids out there you, and, and you're praying it's not one of them. But Ron's been opening my eyes toward a lot of stuff here. You know what I'm saying? And I want to thank him for bringing this to my attention. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed this meeting very much. Thank you. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.